Welcome everyone to the Wednesday Night Live show. Look at Jay, she's already laughing. <laughs> uh, we're back. Uh, everybody is uh, joining us tonight. Uh, Tim is not, uh, what is Tim? Do? Never mind. Tim is not going to be with us tonight. Uh, but we have a special guest joining us tonight, Yahi Yokosaki. Did I get it? <laughs> you surely did not, and that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is. The, can, yeah, go ahead and say your name. I'll let you do it. Sure. Gonna, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Yael Osaski. Yael Osaski. Yael Osaski. He's a consumer and technology advocate, writer, and syndicated radio host. He's also the uh, deputy director at the Consumer Choice Center. He is a con columnist at the European Conservative Magazine and has contributed to the Chicago Tribune, Washington Examiner, the El Presso, El Journal, the Montreal, uh, Charlotte Observer, <laughs> Miami Herald, and more. I got them yep. all in there. A lot. <laughs> he has had over 900 articles published in the newspapers. Look, Paul left <laughs> magazine and online <laughs> outlets. Uh, he is the co-host of the international syndicated Consumer Choice Radio on Big Talker Network in Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. At 9.60 a.m., Toronto, Canada. 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 Canada, Canada. Canada. <laughs> I need more coffee today. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I've been catching the last couple of episodes. I know you've been talking to a couple of people in our orbit, people that I know and uh, people I'm normally in very boring meetings with. And <laughs> on this program. So um, if you guys need me to, I, I do have my buzzer at any time. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That doesn't work here. <laughs> yeah, we got an Aussie on the show. <laughs> the, the, whole that ain't... Like that. <laughs> the F word, I even say it. I'm an ex truck driver, so the F word is part of every sentence. I, you know, yeah. it just that's it. That's life. Yeah. My I mean, mom always said I was a truck driver, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a sailor, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> truck driver or sailor. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he is going to join. <laughs> You're going to try to say his name today. <laughs> Just say why. Just say why. Uh, why. Why will be joining us, and he is uh, going to um, talk a little bit about himself and and what he does on uh, his radio show. And uh, we're going to start off the show like we always do and ask uh, Ali, how's your week going, Ali? Well, not good. <laughs> As you can see, I'm in bed right now, um, and that's because I threw my back out and I've been on bed rest for a week. Um, I can't really walk very well. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been interesting, but I really wanted to get on the show tonight. So excuse my, you know, informal, informal I, I, atmosphere I, going on here, but it is what it is. <laughs> I told her all she's missing is a cup of cocoa and a fireplace. And it would have just got the, the blanket on. It would have been, it would have been the perfect background. It would be nice, but I wasn't in excruciating pain every second. But other than yeah. that, I'm good. You know, I need yeah. some normal safe. So here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mr. Paul, how is your week going, Mr. Summertime? Well, it is summertime, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. and it's actually getting warm for a change. But Nice. Um, yeah, last 24 hours I've been a bit under the weather, so I'll be all right. But other, no. other than that, just reading a lot of documents and rubbish on Twitter. Yeah. And <laughs> are you getting ready to fight some battles yourselves over there? Um. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, Paul is not allowed to say certain things, so he's just going to say no comment when he has to. <laughs> I'm pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth today. That's yeah, you, you can't do that through the whole show, though. You can't <laughs> lead the fan through the whole show. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. All right. And why? <laughs> I'm going to you why? Yeah. Hey, why? How's your week going? Not bad, you know. Uh, I think... Uh... Let me see. I, I was at one meeting with the um, Commodity Futures and Trading Commission uh, talking about <laughs> crypto stuff. Uh, a lot of the garbage that Paul's been reading on Twitter. I've been writing a lot of garbage on Twitter. Uh, I've been doing a good amount of writing. Uh, so, yeah, basically been keeping the, the pen very busy, trying to finish everything up for Christmas and um, trying to enjoy my own uh, weather situation. It's getting a bit colder and uh, uh -huh. where I live, energy bills going through the roof. So yeah, yeah. that is one else. A quick question, because you're a journalist. So when you're on Twitter, are you, are you looking for certain articles to read? Are you following certain people to keep track of those articles? Or are you looking for something new all every day? 
I read Allison's uh, Twitter uh, feed yeah. as uh, probably <laughs> one, one of my. She is my own uh, personal RSS feed that I can subscribe <laughs> to. She does a yeah. very good job there. Um, but, you know, a lot of stuff. So I focus very globally with a lot of my work. So um, I'm French Canadian. My background grew up in North Carolina. I got an Austrian wife. So I, I hop back and forth between the continents and doing a lot of stuff in Asia as well. Writing a lot. Um, I have been to Australia a couple of times there, Paul. So I have been able to do some cool stuff there in me and <laughs> do some work. Is both your in favorite the beer, is your favorite beer Foster's too? Like, like <laughs> no one's oh. favorite beer. It would only be Foster's. It would only be Foster's um, if I was in the United States and pretended like I was enjoying Australia. Yeah, beer. there you go. There you go. No good domestic quality. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let Paul do this tonight. Paul, why don't you say hello to everybody in the chat? You know how to do this, or do I have to switch? Oh, it? Are you know, yes, I yes, I do know how to do All this. Right, head on, head on. I am watching the chat over here. Right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. So far in the chat, we've got oh, there's someone called Zample Box, whoever the hell that is. That is, is me. <laughs> and um, we've got Michael Redfin there. We've got Bruni Sate. Pam is there. Um, who else have we got? Oh, this is interesting. Nico out of the Philippines. Nico. Yep. Oh, I know where that is too. I was over there only a few weeks. You were ago. there, just there. Um, who else have we got? Bruni, Liana. Oh, we got Mr. Y in the chat now. He's <laughs> Mr. Ma Y's magic in there. <laughs> magically appeared. I, I was actually I would have called you Yale, but that's how that's I cool. that, that's a that's a typical Aussie pronunciation. So yeah, yeah. Okay yeah well, can I call you? No, Yale? No, it's all good. <laughs> Did you get head. everybody? You're not, a, you, you're not an Aussie, so yeah. knock it off. Uh, oh, you know, fuck God. off, fuck off. You can't do that one. That's how it works. <laughs> Well, you're not a Nazi either, because I know you told me you got some Sicilian in you. So you oh, I don't have any Sicilian in me. I've got French. Thank you very much. Yeah, there we go. We got French. We got everything going on tonight. Uh, why? Tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got started in in all this. How'd you get started in the vaping industry? Well. Um, Never been much at the vaping industry. I've been in the well, vape world. Um, well, so, you know, atmosphere. in my private, there you go. Here you go. In the apparatus uh, that exists around the plumes of clouds that are left <laughs> on cigarettes. Um, so, for myself, you know, I, I came into this always as a consumer advocate, someone who likes technology and who advocates for innovative technological solutions and vaping very early on probably starting in around 2015, 2016, was something that was very novel. Uh, it was something pretty cool. Nobody was really covering it. And if you ever saw anything about it, usually it was some politician grandstanding about something that was happening. Uh, so for my own background, I was a, a journo, um, basically not far from where uh, Allison is right now in uh, Gastonia, North Carolina. I wrote for the newspaper there, the Gaston Gazette, uh, outside of Charlotte. And uh, covered a lot of stuff relating to, you know, local sheriff's office, the government, uh, the state lottery, how it was soaking taxpayers, this kind of thing. And I always got into this sort of government watchdog position and um, moved to Florida, was doing a lot more of that. Eventually started getting a lot more into training, uh, particularly student activists and activists who dealt with uh, whether it be you know, journalism studies or people who are into public policy. And uh, we founded this organization, Consumer Choice Center, uh, back in 2017. And back then it was about, you know, you have services like Uber, you have technologies like vaping, you have all these great things that exist, but you don't really have a constituency to say, hey, we love this stuff as consumers. You don't really have people out there picketing yep. saying Uber's awesome. You have that with the taxi drivers who want to ban it. Yep. You have the people who are the professional, you know, vape prohibitionists who are saying we want to ban it. So there's not really a group that's defending the interest of consumers. So we, we launched in 2017. And from then on, it's just been about trying to drive home that narrative and line of consumer choice in the U.S. and Canada, across the European Union, different parts of Asia, Africa, LATAM. So really putting out articles, meeting with lawmakers, policymakers, trying to draft model legislation, also putting out our own reports, our own polling, 
uh, trying to do as many different interventions yeah. in um, legislative bodies around the world to try to stop bad legislation. And I've uh, been doing that now for, yeah, a couple of years. So it's, it's kept me busy. Uh, it keeps me international. Um, I use Ryanair mostly, so it doesn't keep my frequent flyer miles too high, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, it's, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a fun adventure, and I've met a lot of great people uh, doing this, um, you know, both professionally and then those who are um, sort of, you know, vaping saved my life, and they've become activists in this realm because they believe in the technology. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the technology, have been for a while. I've, you know, come to see... Uh, Vaping go from something that was, a, you know, a very small sector of the world and now has become incredibly interesting and has become something that, you know, realistically, uh, we've had every single Democratic presidential candidate, they talked about vaping at some point during the last campaign. So it's something that is on the mind of a lot more people nowadays. Yeah. I see you have the blue check mark. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lon. Thank you, Lon. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you, you're going to pay the $8 for the check mark, and you okay. already have it. <laughs> I absolutely will. And yeah. uh, I think um, Twitter is interesting because there is the, the hashtag vape fam, or uh, yeah. you guys are using all kinds of different hashtags nowadays. Yeah. But the world of Twitter, particularly when it comes to uh, you know tobacco harm reduction, it's just fascinating because there's a lot of great people that I've followed that I've seen their stuff for years and years. Uh, sometimes I've met these people in person and I'm like, oh, man, I don't know your real name. I know your your handle. Your, your handle. Um, <laughs> I, I know your handle. I'm just going to call you, you know, you know, vape guy for the stars, 87. And uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I love meeting a lot of the, the vaping activists, you know, at various conferences or protests that we've done, uh, met with academics and. And to actually see a lot of these people in person, yeah, they're not bots. Sorry, no, guys. No, we hear that all bots. the time. We're not bots. Yeah. <laughs> so, so quick quick Twitter question for you, because it's something that we, we, we've all noticed that on this panel. It, we kind of, we're kind of stuck in that little circle. I mean, it doesn't seem like we, we can get our message outside of our own little circle of friends that we have. I mean, I've noticed it for many, many years. It's the same people constantly. Uh, as a journalist, how do you think we should go about using Twitter to our advantage and actually getting out there and having, say, like you said, Joe Blow at Joe Blow Twitter dot com. See us. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of great people. I'm thinking of um, Beaver Phil up in Canada or <laughs> Beaver Phil. Um, I like that. You know, I have no idea who Phil is. You guys probably know. Who. <laughs> but there's a lot of reply guy stuff, you know, so mm -hmm. someone will come out, you know, whatever it's a politician or a journalist, you know, from like local NBC News, San yeah. Diego. Yeah. Who's like, oh, the latest tale of vaping. And then they'll be like, <laughs> I, I already people. like, I already like you. <laughs> He's but got like, the radio voice. He knows yeah. when to jump in at the right time. It's perfect. <laughs> that's what you got to do. Yeah. And then you have like the, the reply guy stuff and that's good, but the algorithm does not like that necessarily. Right. What the algorithm likes is when you look on your right side, you look at the right side and you see the trending topics. Thank you. You use your trending topics. You hook in whatever might be on vaping at the time. And in a way, that is a way you can keep the, the political conversation going. Uh, right. Myself, you know, we have Consumer Choice Center, so we're doing a bunch of different things. So if it's the antitrust stuff in D.C., we're talking right. about that. If we're talking about uh, I'm a big Bitcoin guy, so we're talking yeah, about correct. Bitcoin, this kind of thing. Like, I knew you were a Bitcoin guy. I saw your <laughs> uh, but There's like there's all these different things. As long as you can inject vaping and the narrative of vaping and you know, you don't always have to use just the studies, the stories, this and that. It's just about, hey, here's the narrative of technological innovation, a market for consumers by consumers that is providing solutions. And you can find parallels in like basically every story that exists today in innovation. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you have to do that. Again, I'm not, I'm no major Twitter influencer person so that people are like, pay me to tweet. But what? <laughs> you know, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have they heard your radio voice? <laughs> no, yeah. I've always said, you know, I've always stressed that you start to 
for our, ourselves to start using what's trending and try to to put that into what you're trying to get that message out there. And yeah, you know, you might piss a couple people off that are are following or actually following that 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 hashtag for a certain thing, and you're throwing this in there. But I think if you can have a conversation with that person, because he's gonna maybe who knows maybe five or six of them say, "What is this all about?" and actually come and try to read the post and see what you've been writing about and. That's why I've always tried to tell people, use whatever's trending, try to work it into your sentence somehow, some way, work it in there and try to get into that. Because if it's trending, that means millions of people are seeing it. And there's an opportunity that somebody may scroll past what you have wrote. You know, yeah, there might be a few that say, what the fuck is this? Why is this in here? But at least maybe you'll get a couple that are say, hey, let me go back to this guy's page, see what this is all about. Absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, a point for a lot of the politicians who will write about vaping. I mean, these things are drafted by staff yeah, members. Yeah. It's not them actually doing it. Um, they probably had some kind of Bloomberg funded NGO that's like, you know, sitting there and they've handed them a word document and they just copy and paste. So they're not necessarily monitoring that, but a lot of their constituents are. And a lot of other people are and, and journalists who happen to live in that area. They're also following that. Yeah. So I think it always is important to engage on that kind of stuff and to use like sexy and novel ways of doing yeah. it. You know, I, love, yeah. I love whenever we've got um, I'm just thinking of what is that movie with uh, Rosemary Pike? Is that her name? The one where she's the terrible lawyer and she's vaping in the in the show. It's on Netflix show. So I like any of these like examples from a culture where yeah. we kind of see it being injected because it's really interesting i think true detective season two uh you have rachel mcadams fellow canadian she's oh. uh <laughs> sucking on it and someone at some point is like why are you sucking that you know robot dick you know so she said yeah, something, yeah. something like this, terrible but it's like oh it's kind of interesting that they're they have this commentary on on vaping but it's like oh it's actually for her it makes sense and you know, and yeah. way much safer, blah, blah, blah. And I think this kind of stuff is, is good because you can you can see that in popular culture, it's it's rising up a bit, even though it's kind of being laughed away as some kind of joke. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> there are millions of people who have yeah. much better lives now that they've done yeah. this. I think that's one of the biggest problems. I think they make light of it every time. It seems like anytime vaping is on a show or even like Family Guy or, or some of the Netflix TV shows that I've seen, even on TV, it's always made fun of. So it's, we're never being taken serious as a harm reduction product. It's never looked at as harm reduction. It's always looked at, like you said, why are you sucking this robot dick? And that's funny that you brought that up because that that's like the first thing that came up like 10 years ago. They look like you're sucking a robot's dick. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You have a really sick fucking mind is what I used to tell people. Yeah. And why are well, you looking at all, with all this AI stuff? stuff? You know, believe me, imaginations will run wild. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that, you know, what, what I, what I have seen as effective, at least with some of the lawmakers that, I've talked to who actually tend to be center left. There's actually, a, there are some Dems out there. We like to call them market Dems. Um, these are, are Dems who understand the power of the market and usually have finance backgrounds. And, and they kind of understand that. Um, there are some who are the social justice Dems who kind of get it, who don't want to empower police to do a lot more. We saw, we saw that a lot around sort of the, the menthol ban idea. Yeah. Uh, there you could actually see some people from the ideological left that came out and said, actually, do we really want to empower police to do this? Maybe we don't like what people are, are doing or putting in their bodies, but oh yeah, that's not the function of, of government to control what people put in their bodies. So probably we yeah. should not do that. Yeah. Talk about police. Like I'm, I'm one of those guys that has uh, LA news. Anytime there's a, a car chase, I get a notification on YouTube and last night there was one. They chased this guy for two hours, and then they let him go. They just let him go because he was he stopped speeding. He stopped running red lights, and they felt like, okay, we're just going to let him go. They let him go. I was like, what, what is wrong? What, <laughs> what is so wrong? There's two with options. You? Either it was a white Bronco or it's Pete Davis. <laughs> He was doing like 80, 90 through, through uh, Rio Vista, a whole bunch of different places. And then he got on the freeway. The CHP followed him, got off the freeway. They they sat behind him. And he started to slow down. He stopped running red lights. And they go, well, we're just going to let him go and let the helicopter follow him. And, of course, he got away. So for three wow. hours, three hours, you know, all that tax money that was following mm -hmm. him, they had 10, 15 cops. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You guys got a question for why? Yeah. <laughs>
Michael I, Redfield. I see him a lot on on the tweeters. Yeah, How I you see him on the tweeters a lot. I, um, I've got I've got a question. This is actually sure. an interesting one, and this dials into what you just said about staffers writing a lot of what's going on. Now, we brought it to the attention that some of the FDA documents might have been written by staffers when it was coming to the PMTA process. How much truth do you think is actually in that? And legally, are these staffers really allowed to put that much effort into a document? So when you say the staffers, you mean FDA staffers? Yeah, correct. People that are working like underneath some of the further up the food chain, we'll say. Um, I, I would, I would absolutely believe that I don't have any direct evidence. And if you did, it'd be really interesting to unearth that. And I, I've heard always these kind of rumors and it's, it's this thing to where I've testified at FDA before to their scientific committee. Yeah. Um, it was on a different topic. It was on CBD, which I know you guys have talked about uh, yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. And, and there it was, there it was interesting because it's the scientific committee. I mean, it's all like nerds. Right. And they want the actual facts. They want peer reviewed studies. They want to know. Yeah, sure. Testimonies. We'll get a couple of those. But the scientific data is what's important. Now, obviously, the scientific data when it comes to a lot of the stuff is pretty corrupted. And there's a lot of money yep. that goes the other way. But you could see that the scientific people, they kind of get it and they understand it. They understand the wave that is moving in the direction of harm reduction. And it has for a while. However, they do have a what I like to call a deference to power, and it does not help when you have uh, governments that take this line that is very prohibitionist, and they're actually very surprised when you hear stories about, oh, how do they deal with this in New Zealand, and how do they deal with this in the United Kingdom, yeah. where vaping is actually viewed as very, very favorable and has been endorsed by the health authorities. And Canada is its own kind of monster because um, there are parts of Health Canada that do approve of vaping and actually promote it in a lot of videos. Um, meanwhile, the more political actors don't. So I would say like for the professional scientists to exist in these bureaucracies, they do have an understanding about how this should be kind of run, but it's the political appointees and the more political actors who come not from a scientific background, but a policy background, when they become the decision makers, that's when we're in trouble because they're, uh, you know, they do not pray to the altar of Fauci and science. They pray to the altar of, you know, political truth. Yeah. And we've dealt with that in our own world. And we've noticed in many different state hearings and testimonies, a lot of the prohibitionist groups, they all know each other. They all know the lawmakers and the staff, and you can see that you know it's it's yeah. already cooked in their favor. Yeah. So I, there are these scientific people who get it, but I would say that unfortunately there still is this political bureaucracy, uh, particularly at FDA, that makes it hard. I'd be really I'm very interested in a lot of the proposals for reforming FDA. We're getting that out right now, and if they were to split up the FDA, uh, this would be good on many different fronts. But uh, surely when it comes to harm reduction, vaping, innovative products, technologies, uh, this may be better. I don't know. I don't have too much hope there. I, I look to the yeah. states most of the time for, for good news. Well, it, it's sad, you know, because we talk about it on the show. It's just we can throw those stats at them, but they just keep moving the goalposts or they just don't want to listen to what we are sending, these, these stats. But only their stats make sense. Our stats don't make sense. And it's just – it's got to be – I mean, I'm – I'm a consumer. I'm not, a, I don't own a business or anything like that, but I can understand how frustrating it can be for companies that are, are like, like with Alice that are doing everything that they're supposed to do only to end up, you know, at the goal line. And then uh, a flag is thrown and, and you're 15 yards back. It's just, it's gotta be frustrating because we do have the science, but anytime you noticed it on Twitter, anytime you post something, now nah, that's bullshit. You know, someone will come back from PAVE or one of the other groups or some individual that's out there that's following one of them will come on and, and say that's witchcraft or that's bullshit. That's not true studies. And it's got to be frustrating. Well, it is. It, and it helps when there's a doctor blue check, by the way, who uh, normally can help with this. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. many of them have to. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get that blue check mark myself. I'm going to pay for it. Damn it. Elon, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> 
You got uh, that Sammy dollars. <laughs> hey, you got a couple extra billion. I think you should buy somebody. Buy somebody. Uh, buy an e well, that's buy an e-liquid manufacturing company. No, no, it's no. It's too no, late. It's too no, late for that. It's too no. late. No, I, don't, I don't want to get Elon in here. He'll, <laughs> he'll start trying to sell a bottle. It, buy buy a Tesla and get a free 120 mil bottle of <laughs> Strawberry Delight. <laughs> well, he had his uh, burnt hair fragrance. Uh, so, yeah, I think he probably try to sell something like that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want Elon. Uh, well, so, it's, it's interesting, though, here in Australia when you say that about the scientific community. Because when the prescription model was, <clears throat> pardon me, when the prescription model was brought in October 2021, um, there were, you can't advertise or do anything if it's got nicotine involved. Now, it's got to the point where our TGA, the equivalent of the FDA, have now been handing out fines to doctors, Damn. get this, that are writing the prescriptions. They're not even allowed to promote a product that they believe in. That's the that's the hypocrisy here right now. And I actually do know a doctor that was fined just recently two and a half grand for recommending a product on Twitter. I went, you are fucking kidding me. Was that Dr. Colin? Someone else. <laughs> I, it, it's pleading the fifth. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's it's not the first one either by the way there's yeah. been a okay. few doctors now and we went we went through it many okay. times but out of 130,000 doctors 1300 or 1400 now are registered to actually prescribe nicotine but out of that group only 450 470 are actually willing to have their names published on the TGA website now why are the rest of these doctors not putting their names up there? A, is it because the AMA or the Australian Medical Association told them, don't do that, you'll get into trouble? Mm -hmm. Or B, was it the RACGP, which is the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners? These are the two groups, right? They're lobby groups, nothing more than that. They don't give a flying fuck about the doctors. They just want money, money, money. Mm -hmm. And you, if you don't toe the line, will make sure that you get in trouble somewhere down the road even. Not in the next five minutes. It might be in five years. And the, the corruption here that we've been watching over the last five to seven days, the blatant lies that are coming out of the health... And this is coming from the health departments, not from other groups. These are... It's not even funny anymore. It's gotten to a point where... Either we've got to change the mantra of some of these health departments or infiltrate them or FOIA requests for all their emails. Who are you getting your information from, one? And two, who's telling you what to say in these ads? It, it's ridiculous. And their their fines are serious in Australia. They don't they don't mess around. I mean, uh, so they're up to eight hundred thousand now in fines that they're handed out to the industry. <laughs> See that that's the kind of fine. I mean, we've talked about that on the show. What if we had fines like that for T twenty one? You know, would it would it help one bit at all? Would would the store owners finally go? Well, wait a minute, fuck! If I'm going to have to pay a hundred thousand dollars for 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 making a five cent profit on a pack of cigarettes because I sold it to some 18 year old, he, he may think twice of doing well, it. It's not even the store owners though. It's not vape shops that are the problem. No, 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 no. Stores and stuff like that. And, and to be honest with you, most of them are just employees and they don't care. Well, yeah, but it, 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 if, it, it, if the fine is steep enough, Oh, the company the will care. They'll care when they lose their job, but they uh, probably yeah. won't be at the forefront of their mind while they're doing it. See, their I, job. I, I personally think you shouldn't have to fuck up three times to lose your driver's license. Absolutely not. I yeah. think that if you actually just put it in like <laughs> licensed vape shops only, 21 up and enforced real fines and have real consequences, then there's a lot of different ways to solve yeah. the issue. Or to, yeah. I mean, you're never going to solve it. Completely. Shut down Snapchat. Why do you, no, I'm why kidding. Why people are coming in and buying this stuff for their kids? But hey, hey we can't. Parents have no responsibilities. I, that's what I wrote on parents. I say you guys are <laughs> bitching about free money that you just got from Jewel, and and about harm reduction, no harm reduction programs for these kids. But yet yeah. you don't give a shit about none of these governments actually giving what percentage the CDC has asked them to give 
for funding for these programs. Yep. That yeah. never what comes up. What are they doing with their tobacco money? They're not yeah. using it for what they're supposed to be yeah. doing. Yeah, we've seen that list. Some of the states have given zero, zero. Connecticut is one of them. Connecticut was one of the states that has done zero for harm reduction programs in their state, zero. So it, it, it makes me laugh. They'll blame everyone but themselves or the government. You know, the yeah. government is on their back, has got their back. Well, of course, you know, the government is pro funding these programs, putting money in their pocket, keep, keeping their secretaries being secretaries, doing absolutely nothing. And it, it's, it's a joke. Uh, real quick, any of you guys ever gotten a response back from parents against vaping on anything you've ever wrote? Um, I mean, I had that one comment exchange with Erin on my LinkedIn. Um, and then once I like posted some real data, she blocked me and then she flagged me. <laughs> <laughs> blocked. <laughs> oh, you need that blue check mark. No, <laughs> and I wasn't rude. I really wasn't rude. No, I no, I, I don't I like, think there I, are real ways to solve these issues, Erin. And yeah. here's some ideas and here's some actual data. And here's the states that have banned these things. And you know, the, the yeah. black market is raging and this smoking is up. And, you know, these aren't things that you, I, I would assume as a parent want. Yeah. And, well, that's what happened. She know. ran out of stuff on her checklist to respond to you with. So she just went, all right, yeah. she's going to have to block well, you Michael now. <laughs> like, what do I do? She got me. Just block her. <laughs> have never well, gotten does. any, no mea culpas, no, um, no good faith conversation. I'll just say yeah. that. Um, none of that. That's uh, that's been uh, unfortunately. There's never a back and forth. There's yeah. never a back and forth with any. They of don't these really groups. want a resolution. I, that's how I feel. If you did, then you would be doing everything you could possibly do to make a resolution happen. I don't want a solution. I want to burn it all down. Yeah. Yeah. Burn it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you got to use a lighter for that. So. What would they do then? They'd have to just stand cave and do something else. So they, can, else yeah, they can borrow the lighter from all the people that they're bringing back to smoking cigarettes. Yep. They can go to those, hey, can I borrow your lighter? <laughs> but the, the other problem is, you know, the people at PAVE and the rest of those silly little groups, they're not going to have any more, any more money for their canned wine either. That, yeah. that, that's where they – this is a problem. When no you, more, when you no try, more fancy lunches to go to. Well, I, yeah. Okay. Well, their cheese platters are going to get taken away from them. You <laughs> won't be there. You, you won't be there. You know, they won't get to sit down it. with the president when when they well, shouldn't have been there in the first place. But they, I, they, I they, don't <laughs> understand. I don't understand that one. And then I don't understand how they got a seat at the table at the last cop conference at cop nine. Money, money, money. That, 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 <laughs> Yeah, but they, they they had no right being there. No, they had and, none. And then you see them sitting there talking when Cuomo was over in, like in power over in New York. They they're having lunch with him and having you know buddy buddy photos done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like seriously, there's better people to have selfies done with than that jackass, mm -hmm. right? That's for a start. And they, even before that, you know, you've got Bloomberg coming out of New York, New York. If they'd done things right and what they're doing now going through and, and raiding even bodegas looking yeah. for, you know, but, illegal but, products, that's outrageous. Paul, we both know he's just a pawn. Bloomberg is a pawn. He's not the big fish in this fight. I think he's just a pawn that they're using to get their agenda through. I, I don't think he's the he's the big fish. There's someone, there's many, many people above him. That are, are pushing the buttons, but I want to well, ask. I want to ask why a question as a journalist. When when you are writing an article, say on vaping, and uh, do you feel like that you you are pretty much stuck to a, a certain platform that you are going to be able to get that article out there? Do you feel like you ever you could ever write something that would make it to I don't know the Washington Post, the New York Times? Yeah, um, I mean, I've been publishing some good outlets. Um, I would say that the whatever the best newspaper in your state, uh, they tend to be open to much of this commentary. When it comes to WAPO and NYT, uh, not so much. Uh, there it's a lot about credentialism. Uh, there it's a lot about outrage clicks. Um, since uh, Paul mentioned cop, can I give a quick cop story? Um, yeah. Talking about the media as well. All right, we love cool. cop stories. <laughs> well, let's go to cop. Let's go back. I don't even know the year. Let's go to Geneva. Jesus, when was this? 2018? 
I think it was 2018. 20, I wasn't even born uh, yet. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was 2018 because yeah, 2019 was um, Poland. I think. I'm trying to remember which one was what, but yeah, I think it was right, so 20, 2016 was New Delhi. So actually we were there too, uh, which is very interesting. That was my first cop. That was my first interaction with it all, covering it, writing articles. Um, then I was writing mostly in Huffington Post when it was still alive. Um, that was very fun. And uh, come to Geneva. So we saw Chris Snowden there. You know, he's the, the, the British... Um, uh, he's the lifestyle expert over there at the IEA, and uh, we're chatting with him a bit. We come, we talk to a lot of groups. Um, I was able to get a journalist badge in the cop, which was great because it meant I could go to the press conference and I could ask a question of the authorities uh, who were there, who would talk about the day's proceedings or what was going on. And you know, at that point, Consumer Choice Center was still relatively new, so we weren't on the enemy list just yet. Uh, that came later. Uh, we were there and were able to ask the questions. And we had the Directorate General of uh, what we call DG Santé, uh, it's the European Union Health Commission. Uh, we had the the head of the FCTC, uh, Margarita de Silva, and you had a, a, a other bureaucrats on there. And the main question was, do you recognize the nuance between cigarettes and tobacco products and novel vaping devices that have nothing to do with that. Do you see any nuance there? And the response that we got was no. That was the direct question. And then after that, hand goes up in the front. And it's a woman that we talked to, we chatted with, who happens to be from the New York Times. And she uh, raises the question. She goes, should you be answering his question? Because these guys are not real journalists. These are activists. They have oh, a point God. of view, and you should not be answering these questions. She's like, oh, and then the people at the front say, oh, we'll discuss this later. Then the press conference ends. Woman comes over. She goes, yeah, you guys shouldn't be here. You know, you're just activists. You shouldn't be doing this. Um, I've talked to the staff here at FCTC, and we're trying, we're, collective we, we're trying to pull your media credentials. So this New York Times um, health reporter, uh, I will say her name, Sheila Kaplan. So you might have read some of her articles. She's been one of the worst um, health reporters, particularly on this issue uh, that has ever existed. And she was working with FCTC. She was very buddy-buddy with them. FCTC is Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, this kind of uh, supranational, international organization. And essentially, um, they never confronted us uh, they told her and they told the press that they pulled our media credentials. But I showed up the next day and I was there talking to people, asking questions mm. and still able to roam the halls. Uh, later in the New York Times article that came out about it, um, it said that we were ushered away in all this bull. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Handcuffed. Uh, so um, capital F failing New York yeah. Times uh, did not work out there. And you know, we, we had a lot of back and forth. And that's where we, we came up with, and again, this is not an original thought, but we held an event at the same time with uh, Dr. Bant Maya. He's an Austrian toxicologist. He's one of the only people who's actually studied nicotine on its own, uh, separated from tobacco and has a lot of smart things to say. And uh, we had an event, Nicotine is Not Your Enemy. That was like our, our first kind of big event on that theme, 2018. And she used that in the piece and said, you know, this is, you know, it's un- all this is unproven and they're trying to get everybody addicted and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, no, just trying to keep the legal yeah. path that, you know, millions of people are using that happens to be endorsed by one of the members here by the United Kingdom. Yeah. And it was a sort of back and forth credentialism. You know, she was making the point to me personally, you know, oh, you're just an activist, you know, and I said, well, it's like, is Julian Assange? an activist or a journalist he goes, oh he's definitely an activist i'm like of course you'd say this yeah um, this is this is one great thing about the united states is that we have a constitution and journalism as it is is, is really one of the only protected careers uh because you got the first amendment and you can't yeah. say that about many other countries and i can write and say whatever i want and you can't stop me and you cannot force the government to stop me but unfortunately right. she tried to do that at an international level yeah yeah Ali, you want to throw something at him? Oh, no. throw, throw him a curveball. 
<laughs> All right. Um, so, I mean, obviously you've been involved with this and, and writing about harm reduction since 2016, um, you know, and, and, and obviously it did pique your interest. I mean, I know there's a lot of things that Consumer Choice Center covers, but I feel like you do a lot of, of, of the vaping <clears throat> industry stuff. And I think that's probably because it's very easy, even if you're not a, somebody that uses, you know, a vaping product to to feel compassion for people when you actually meet the people that are using them and have, and the stories that we do tell anecdotal or not, they are, you know, they definitely can sway you and make you feel, you know, passionate about this. So my question is, you know, like, do you, I know that you don't vape, right? You never smoked and you don't use a vape or do you? He's going to pull one out right now. <laughs> he's looking, he's looking. Yeah. <laughs> he's can, I, looking. Can, I pull, can I pull out my lost vape? Is that cool? There or? you go. There you go. Yeah, Hold yeah, on. You get it. something. You get something. Hold yeah. on. Let me so find it. Let so, me find it. There so it is. <laughs> yeah. so you, so you do vape, but is there like, you know, how do you feel like, as far as being on this and in the inside, you know, so to speak, where you do get to have these conversations, you know, do you think that the efforts that we're making and you think that, you know, we can make some kind of change and, and, and get somewhere with the FDA in, in some way, shape or form, or do you have any suggestions for us, you know, as advocates in, in you know, in how to take things maybe to the next level to get more stuff done or to get more people to listen? I think the practical angle is the best. Um, what I've noticed about a lot of people I talk to is they've never, they've never met a vapor. They know nothing about it. They've seen like, you know, maybe a guy at a bus stop, you know, or something, or they've uh, read some study or saw some terrible uh, did, head, headline news, children, vaping in the bathrooms. Click um, me. <laughs> so they, they've seen that, but they actually have not met a person who's walked them through and showed them a vape device, how it works, how you refill it, how you change the coils, all this kind of stuff. And that is like their own ignorance. Yeah. And I've really noticed that when you actually, you know, pull one out, show them how it works, then they're like, oh, okay. So this is not yeah. a tobacco product. This is a technology right. product. Yeah. Right. This is an innovative product. And I think once we get that, that's why I always try to harp on innovative technology as the angle for what vaping is because it is something brand new that has been invented by the market as a solution. It was yeah. not thought up in some bureaucratic meeting, like, you know, this Bloomberg yeah. pharmacy vape device, whatever they're trying to push. Yeah. Yeah, it the, wasn't designed by the Illuminati. It didn't come out some dark <laughs> tunnel. And it wasn't designed back in by the woods. Big Tobacco. That's, I think that's the biggest <laughs> you know? thing. And then pisses me off. Well, like, well, oh, I, you know, you work for Big Tobacco, or, and yeah. I'm like, I don't get paid for any of this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Hold on. Let me take out my, uh, my marble wallet that I got with yeah, my marble yeah, bucks. <laughs> now, I think we were at that point before Ivali. I think it was starting to get out there. I think people were starting to share the information uh, to, to, to their coworkers, to their friends. And I think after Ivali, I think everything went back to being that closet vapor. I'm going to worry about myself. I'm going to take care of myself right now. I'm going to make sure I can get my e-liquid and uh, I, not sharing the information, not sharing the links, not talking, because I think that's the biggest part. I mean, there are more people that don't smoke and that don't vape, that don't give a shit, don't care, and they're not going to worry about it, but they're just going to pay attention to whatever is written out there with the clickbait. And that's all their focus. They're not going to take the time because they don't care. They have no, no, what is the, no dog in the show. I forget that fucking no dog saying. in the fight. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, they have no dog in the fight. So they're just. Well, I mean, so, people used to say to me, like, congratulations, this is a great thing you're doing. And now it's almost like I feel like I have to hide it, especially when yeah. I go to stuff for my son that is high school. Yeah. Like, I don't want people to know what I do, yeah. you know, yeah. in my spare time, because it's I almost feel like they're going to look at me like I'm. I'm a bad mom or like bad I'm, girl, you know, yeah, I'm pushing this or my kid has yeah. his hands on this, but it's in reality, I actually parent my kid and he doesn't have his hands on any of this stuff, but it's, you know, it's almost like a bad thing to let people know now. I almost feel more shame, I guess you could say uh, from people, not internally, but from yeah. people that even when I was a smoker. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, the same people are chugging Pepsis and Coca Colas and no, you know, three different. or four Red Bulls right. a fucking day. And they should have the choice to do it. By the way, yeah, lifestyle yeah, freedom. If you, yeah, want, yeah. If, you want, if you want to drink five Red Bulls in an hour, knock that's yourself right. yeah, out. that's your adult I choice. That's for sure. And another yeah. angle I've noticed, and uh, that's why 
I like to keep up with the trends. I like to follow, you know, what people are using. And I know you guys have talked about disposables before, and there's, you know, all kinds of different opinions on that. Um, I think it, it was, it's a good thing that disposables are available generally, right? With legal, you do all this whole thing. Uh, because any, any path that people have to harm reduction, I think is very good. Uh, one thing I've noticed a lot, uh, mostly in the US, I've seen it picking up a lot more in Europe are the pouches. I'm a pouch maximalist. Yeah. So big fan. And I think there, there's a lot of very good opportunities because none of the normal talking points apply. And we just say, well, this is just another form of the same technology. You know, it's just a way for people to get that nicotine. And by the way, it's just like caffeine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all yeah. Yeah. Proven oh, this. we talked about that. That might be their next uh, ploy. Parents against caffeine. I can see it coming. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be, that would be way too much. Of for it, I, yeah, I'm telling you, after happen. the wine moms, I mean, yeah. if it's the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's going to take one day. It's going to happen. Some senator is going to wake up and he's going to look at his, uh, his ATM bill from his son and he's going to say, holy shit, why are you spending $200 and 50, $250 a week at Starbucks? You know, why, why are you doing this? And then it'll just take off from there and they'll go after the mochas and the lattes and the, <laughs> the caramel frappiatos or whatever you want to fucking call them. It, it, it just, it, it's it's going to happen. You're it, just it, part I, of the Nespresso lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And don't piss the coffee yeah. people off. I mean, it's, that's, ooh. you want to see anarchy. <laughs> it's a very good parallel. And you guys know Ken Burns. Everyone yeah. knows Ken Burns. Yeah. Good man. Uh, so you have this amazing documentary on prohibition. And how the prohibition movement started up, the temperance movement, anti-saloon league, parents and mothers, wives. And to see that happen at a grassroots level, it was interesting to see it kind of build up. And then it, it moved into the realm of, OK, we're going to have our own bands and now we're going to have constitutional amendment and now we're going to ban it for everybody. Meanwhile, everybody's hanging out at the speakeasy, everyone, you know. <laughs> The Bureau of Narcotics that existed at the time is just the most corrupt thing ever. And that's why the, we just had uh, Prohibition Repeal Day a couple of days ago, by the way. Uh, another good thing. Uh, and I think that kind of narrative of talking about prohibition, restrictionism, prohibition, I think that is, is probably somewhere that we kind of have to go because on the health arguments alone – you know, until we wash out a lot of the NGO Bloomberg money, it's going to be very hard to compete with. Um, it's true. Facts are on that side. But I think when you bring up the prohibition, when you bring up the uh, we're going to have cops, you know, shutting down stores, going, making sure people don't have vapes in their hands, this kind of stuff. I think that those, unfortunately, will have to be more of the arguments. And we've seen what's happened with uh, particularly prohibition when it comes to so many other products like cannabis and they are of one mind on that so it, it's this kind of interesting parallel where you have new york state you know that's pushing through with awesome cannabis legalization which we're for and we've lobbied and all the rest but at the same time you can't get your vape flavor unless you go to an indian reservation yeah. oh, sorry it's did crazy i bust make so much progress in that aspect and then oh and then take so many steps backwards in yeah. in in the vaping you know, and it's just ridiculous because that's the problem. We're already seeing the black market. We're already seeing the issues on a small scale. If, if it was banned completely, it would it would be way worse. And what these parents don't understand is that their kids are going to get their hands on much more dangerous options. That's right. We're, yeah. we're watching the black market go from, you know, just slowly cruising along here in Australia as soon as the the prescription model was brought in. Originally, we thought there was around half a million vapors. Now the figures have come out. There's 1.1 to 1.4 million vapors here in Australia. 90% of them don't have a prescription. Yep. And this is the problem. But the black market here, it's on steroids. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I mean, it is seriously now on steroids in this country. And it's only getting worse. We so don't know what uh, to do. They're scoff laws. That's the uh, the old term that they yeah, invented back yeah. then. Everyone's breaking the law and no one cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. No, the Kennedy, not at all. The Kennedys became very rich because of the prohibition. Think about that one for a minute. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. I, they, they probably still had 
<laughs> that was uh, that thanks was to their Canadian boots. brothers up there making hey. that whiskey. <laughs> Hey, we still have dry counties in different parts of North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's all kinds of battles we're still fighting there. Well, but yeah, that, that angle of prohibition is is still yeah. that is one that will carry the day because at least there the kind of social justice left who can be allies on many different topics uh, that we work on. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, they have been bamboozled on much of this. But you know, when it really comes down to it, and I think the menthol fight played out and showed that narrative that, oh, actually, there are a lot of concerns that have to do not just with what people put in their own bodies, but civil liberties and having police having to divert their time from actual crimes to what people are doing there. I mean, it doesn't matter if you see a lot of Twitter things where somebody gets you know tased or something and you read some of the headline, maybe it was because he had a vape in his pocket or was vaping at you know, some <laughs> train station or something like that. Like, whether or not it's true, oh. the fact that, that people are like applauding that is yeah. sick. Well, yep. we, we had the story uh, last week, uh, the guy uh, vaping <laughs> that fell off the, the cruise ship. Of course, they had to add the fact that he was out there vaping and somehow fell off. They didn't mention that he was drunk off his ass, but the, they had to make sure that the word vaping was in the title, that he went outside to vape and fell off the boat and was in the water for 15 hours. And, you know, we, we all hope that he protected his vape and kept it dry the whole time. Yeah, so, it was coming yeah. like that. He did, yeah. he did the, <laughs> He did the thing. I'm telling you, I still picture him falling off the boat and pull, holding his hand up like this with the vape in it. And just we so all know that's it. how the cargo ship saw him. The vape cloud coming up uh, out of the water. <laughs> you, you know, it was funny because my buddy was. We, he saw that we were talking about that story last week, and he he th he didn't. He brought up a good point, and I I I didn't even think about it. But that is a freaking long drop. Yeah, you think about that. Yeah, that is a long drop. I'm surprised he even lived. And that's what he said. I'm surprised he lived because that is one hell of a drop from wherever, you know, you're talking a couple stories, right? One of those ships. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that water has to be like cement when he hit it, you know, depending oh, how he hit yes it. And, <laughs> yes and no, because you've got the you've got the wake of the boat actually breaking Well, he's up drunk the too, so he didn't yeah, feel oh, shit. No. no but, <laughs> Yeah, but you got the wake of the boats breaking up the surface tension, yeah. so that that's part of it. Is our science, but, <laughs> but PhD. Yeah, yeah, but it is science. Science rocks. That's mm. how. That's how it should be. Uh, but here, here, we'll if take a cruise. Vaping, you and I, Phil, we'll take a cruise, Paul, and I'll throw you off the boat, and you let me know what happens. <laughs> See how. <it> <laughs> I don't, my knees wouldn't my knees wouldn't survive it but yeah, yeah that's no. all well and good but <laughs> here in australia if you're caught vaping or smoking at a train station a bus station or anywhere else like that it's an on the spot 400 dollars fine thanks for coming thanks okay yeah, yeah and they're hitting they're hitting all these young people that are vaping waiting for a bus and this is early in the morning and late in the afternoon but then on top of that here in New South Wales, where I live, you get it, you're at a train station. We've also got drug dogs. That's even more fun. So yeah. you got a joint in your back pocket that you want to smoke on your way home from work, or you get fined for that one. Then you get fined for vaping. But see, here's the yeah. difference, Paul. That you, there's something you just said. You guys are actually policing it. We don't even police it here. So it, to a, it's, to a it's point, just but the, it's the wild, wild west point. here. Because there's okay. no reason to be afraid. What is it? A I, you know twenty eight dollar fine? Big fucking deal, you know. I think the fear okay, is not being able to, go, to get it. I think that's the fear. Yeah. It's just not being able to go to your vape shop and get it. And where are you going to get it if you if they do away with it completely? You got that guy in the corner with the trench coat. What do you want? Right. <laughs> I've got peach. You, you, well, I got mango. Yeah. <laughs> I got grape. It, 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 it's always it's always funny that we've progressed so far on the technology side of it, but in in the standpoint of tobacco harm reduction, I don't care what device or what you're actually using, yeah. whether it's sprays, patches, gums, vaping devices, um, like snooze or pouches, I really don't care. Yeah. You, you're helping you're helping yourself to a yourself. healthier life. Mm -hmm. Right? That's how that's how I see it. Yeah. Policing it is one thing, John, but the biggest problem here is that in New South Wales, retailers, it's a thousand dollar fine. Okay, if they're caught mm -hmm. with 
with devices that they that they're not meant to be selling. If they've got nicotine, it jumps up just a little bit. But it's the people that have been most affected are uh, uh, medical companies and doctors. When you start finding the people that are trying to help other people get off yeah. combustibles, that that's not policing in in my eyes. That's no. an outright stu- outright stupidity. Yeah, you, you well, shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. I want to uh, talk a little bit about Canada. And uh, how how are things there for you guys? And I, I understand it's provinces, right? Every it's not a town, right? So you have all Province, different provinces, yeah. and they're all pretty much do their own thing, correct? Because I've noticed there's sections that are like like you said in the beginning of the show. There's sections that are just like, yeah, this is great. This is helping people get off smoke. And then you have another section that's just like, oh God, no, we get to get out of it, get out of it. Basically, following the U.S. You know what U.S. is saying; they're they're paying attention to. How how do you go about spreading your word there in Canada? Is it through the through your radio station, or do you do other things? Yeah. So the great thing about Canada is, I'll be a Canada maximalist for the moment, is that it is the most decentralized country in the world. Um, so this provincial model that you're talking about, you know, I'm from the French speaking province, so we've uh, we had you know referendums to break apart from the country. And you've got Alberta, the, the kind of Texas of Canada, uh, which is essentially <laughs> asserting its own authority because they have oil okay. and they're trying to break away as much as possible. And what we've noticed there is that what the federal government does is it's it's still very minimal. You know, they have some safety stuff. They do military. But all the actual nitty gritty is always done by the provinces. And those are a bit easier to get into the halls of parliament. You can talk to people, you can have good conversations. I mean, on our radio show alone, we've been able to get, you know, how many MPs um, very easily. And whether they're from the liberal party, the sort of left-leaning party or the center-right party conservatives. So we've been able to talk to them about a lot of these issues. Mostly the problem is the permanent bureaucracy. Um, So that's why I mentioned Health Canada. Health Canada is essentially just like their, their health regulator at the federal level, which realistically doesn't have too much authority because it's with the provincial health authorities, but because they set the standard, they can coerce a lot of the provincial regulators to do things their own way. So we've seen a lot of bad stuff that's come out of that, but thankfully the provinces have a bit more purview. Um, so you can still get you know 5% vape cartridges throughout Canada, mm-hmm. which impossible in the European right. Union. Um, not going to be the case very long globally. U.S. I'm you know they're pushing for NIC caps uh, through FDA uh, on all products, which would be very bad. Which again for vapors doesn't really matter because you can always mix it and add more and this kind of stuff. But yeah. the whole problem is is that the standards are what's important because the majority of people who are switching are using these products that are pre-filled, that are pre-done, that they can just pick up use, throw away, or, you know, throw the cartridge away or something like that. I've noticed that at the provincial level, it's a lot easier to talk to people to discuss it. They're closer to the people, smaller populations. So they're much more attuned to that. Um, When it comes to Health Canada and the like, um, you know, it's just different sections because technically on paper, Health Canada is pro-harm reduction. But through action and through a lot of stuff they're pushing and definitely internationally, uh, not good. And it's actually the same for the UK. I don't know if you've uh, you probably talked to some other some yeah. Brits there, but the UK actually spent, I think it's to the order of ten million dollars to try to ban uh, vaping products in the Republic of Georgia, the country. Mm-hmm. So through FCTC, the UK, which is a harm reduction country, where you can go to your GP, you can go to the uh, NHS hospital, and there's a vape shop there. They were actually paying money. So that countries would put in these very strict bans. And we saw that more and more. And, you know, because it's small countries, no one really cares. But it's the apparatuses of government that are working sort of against each other cross purpose. And highlighting that sometimes I think is very important and necessary. And there's some very good comments we've gotten from various um, health ministers in Canada that have been very pro harm reduction or they've at least not been antis. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can use that as a as a narrative, but it, it's definitely difficult when you deal with professional bureaucrats who have a vested interest. And you know, sometimes that's when it's good to talk to 
political people, political imp- appointees who actually have to face the heat from voters at some point. Yeah. Well, I, what I've noticed is is uh, with with vaping there, it seems like it's either get out of here or you can stay, but we're going to tax the shit out of it. I mean, it, that's where it seems like it's 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 either or it's either it's going to go or it's going to stay, but it's going to get a hefty tax. And again, the the caps always come into consideration too, sometimes in certain provinces. So how does that work? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, have you seen numbers? I have, I've, I've not seen the numbers, but it seems like it's, it's still same, same kind of technique that we tried here by taxing a permanent leader. Correct. This is what has been going on over there as well. Like crazy numbers too, like 40 cents, 30 cents. Yeah, it's a, you don't go to Canada for low taxes. Um, so <laughs> that is that that is a kind of problem on the consumer side. And that's why what's been useful in Canada, at least when speaking with policymakers, is that, you know, how does this impact the middle class guy? How does this affect the truck driver who you know, is just trying to quit, who finds this, you know, at a, at a gas station, able to pick something up, finds it's a lot better, but, you know, he realizes it ends up costing him about $3 more than more. just buying a pack of cigs, right? So that that price argument is, is important, and we're seeing that with cannabis right now. You have, you know, places like California and Colorado, where the taxes on cannabis make it, make it in Canada as well, you know, we have legal yeah. cannabis People just you stay in the black market because there's no yep. reason to go to the store. It's going to cost you twice as much. And I, th- I think that price argument has been very helpful. So there are some good people who are in the Liberal Party caucus, that's Justin Trudeau's party, who understand this message and are on our side. We just need to make sure that these are the people who get to make decisions and power. And we can't really make that determination, but time will tell. So I, this is the thing about government. It's, it's you know, left hand, right hand. There are some good actors in there who are trying really hard. They just have to face the evils of bureaucracy and vested interests. And as long as you speak up, you know, it doesn't matter who your representative is. As long as you put in your, your voice whenever there is a key issue. Um, in the States, you know, it's mostly you call the switchboard at the office and they just tally it on the paper. They yeah. say, well, this many people against, this many people for. So as long as you do that or do that in some way or work with some organizations that collect petitions like world vapors alliance or something like that like that stuff kind of works and it it's a slow process it takes time uh, but it's it's at least another uh, sort of d- dagger that we have in this fight and i think will in time be successful but i think even more than that technological innovation will trump all of this and we'll have even better alternatives things will be cleaner things will be a lot better and then people start viewing this not as a, you know, product for people who are sinners, but as a health product. Yeah, and I think that'll go very far. Do you feel that that's what the FDA is doing though? By by doing these PMTAs, is trying to to, to hinder innovation within our industry because they, I mean, they're not they're not. We used to say they're stupid, but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be on. They're not stupid anymore. They've been paying attention. They understand the product. They understand how it works. And they understand what we need. And I think it seems like here lately, it's just like they have noticed that in 12 years, we've gotten a better and better, not just a device, but as Paul stated, better and better e-liquids, better, just better all around, distributing the whole nine yards. And and by hindering it, by doing these PMTAs and making sure uh, they eliminate everyone except for maybe a hand, we might be lucky if we have a handful of companies that are going to be around. That's, yeah, we that's actually that. happening now. Yeah, that's happening now. That they're joining forces. You you see some of the the older, well-established liquid manufacturers. If they see smaller companies that are flailing, they'll take them under their wing and generally buy their recipe books. I'm seeing that quite a lot now. Um, like we've got we've got some big things in store for next year for what I'm doing with 2501, but we've also got a few of the OGs out of California wanting to now come out of retirement and help with what we're trying to achieve. Um, Australia, if they do go down the tax route that they're looking at, they actually want to tax vaping liquids at the same rate as cigarettes here, which 
that's like that's that's mortifying. crazy. You're, you're already paying. No, that's mortifying. Forty bucks for a pack of cigarettes. Oh, 40, 40, 42 now. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You I mean you've really got to want a fucking cigarette? That's not what I'm saying. Well, yeah, I know, I know, because we were all there. I, I, I don't even have to go there. If you want a cigarette, you're gonna find a way. But well, I, cigars, I don't see it. cigars now are just yeah. they're I, outrageously priced now. Well, I'm just thinking of the guy that gets asked to bum a cigarette. <laughs> the look on that guy's face, like, dude, seriously? <laughs> this I, get, I get asked all the time. Like, I can't believe they, people even ask. <laughs> to be honest, I'd be embarrassed I go, to ask. <laughs> really? Does this look like a cigarette, man? So, yeah. well, I know, but the, I'm saying that that price for a pack of cigarettes, mm -hmm. I mean, to ask someone to bum a cigarette from them, I mean, you got to have some balls now because that, that one cigarette could be, you know, about a buck. <laughs> well, they are. That's how they put it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's why... That's why the illegal tobacco industry here in Australia, it is thriving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they said, oh, but we didn't do that. I said, huh, didn't do that. Hmm, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I'd think again on that one, you dickheads. Yeah. You, you messed that one up. Oh, I now know you if want I to come after us. Yeah, I know if I still smoked, I'd smoke that all the way to the fucking filter, man. I think <laughs> that damn cigarette. Well, well that's, that's why I, I never... Yeah, like in the last ten years of me smoking, yeah. I was ro I was rolling. Yeah, and There's no way. Yeah, okay. Tom Marowitz is in yeah the, in the chat, and he'll that's in New Zealand. New Zealand, but they're... yeah, but they're they're getting break ins to the stores, yeah. right? Oh, they're like getting that. ram raids, ram raids, and shit into the dairies or into the corner stores for the cigarettes and for the vaping liquids now because of the the tax issues. We're starting to see that here now, but it's not being reported. Yeah. It's very it's very cool, calm and collected. They're breaking in. Yeah. yeah. Tong and Chop Chop, also Chinese. And that, that'll bring up something else in a little while. Yeah. Because some of the Chop Chop that's coming in from China here into Australia actually has the logo of the Chinese tobacco <laughs> tobacco growers. <laughs> I'm like, the are Royal you guys, Seal. Are you, no, well, it's run by government, yeah. and they're finding this now, and we're going. Uh, hang on a second, how did this happen? Oh well, well, we thought putting the taxes up higher and higher would fix the problem. Oh, guess what? It backfired, dickheads. Yeah, yep. it really did. Yeah, they have it's a pretty bad worse. black market there in New Zealand. Oh yeah, hardcore. How yeah. is that possible? They are nabbing people for having grass on their fucking golf clubs, but they can't stop vaping <laughs> them. <laughs> also, also because you're still allowed to grow X yeah, amount of tobacco plants. Yeah, yeah, I know. And oh, you're I've allowed to a, grow, yeah. Yeah, here in Australia, it's it's what was it? I think it's eleven thousand dollars per plant. That's your fine if you're found with a tobacco plant here in Australia. Jesus um, Christ, man! Yeah, 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 it's fun, you know. When they bought the industry out back in 2006, it, it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. But you can grow all the opium you want, right? Oh, that's all owned by... <laughs> uh, ah, that's, that's the, Welcome that's to the, Australia. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the dirty little secret. Yeah, I know. That was... That all had to do with Abbott Pharmaceuticals that yeah, were doing the yeah, testing yeah, and actually yeah. helping the grow. And they were the ones that actually helped develop yeah. Like the opioid market, that is all owned by Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Three points per person. There you go. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I didn't know how many it was. Thanks, dude. Uh, welcome but, to Australia. <laughs> well, we can't have that. That's thirty-three grand plus GST. So yeah. that's thirty-six thousand dollars if you get yeah. pinged. Yeah. Well, but the our fines range from eleven hundred dollars but if you're a manufacturer and you're manufacturing with nicotine they can go all the way up to two hundred thousand dollars here right so you're talking some hardcore fun and games and, and yeah it's unbelievable well, i want to get i want to get back to 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 why and uh talk about the journalist side i, I mean I, we were talking a little bit about how uh, you're trying to get your articles in bigger things and bigger bigger companies, or I don't even know what you would call it, but bigger outlets. How do we go about trying to force 
a newspaper or a news outlet to try to see our story. I, I want to hear what a journalist has to say because I know what we we all say we have to do something pretty extreme. But I mean, we don't, we're we're a group of people that aren't going to do extreme shit. I don't think so. We're we're polite. We're polite people. Yeah, I think a lot of the the editors are not really deferential to the ideological uh, arguments. They are just about you know, can you bring the, the links and the facts and the sources, and then can you make it sexy enough that it's interesting? Because uh, they're in the clicks game, and they're in the amazing world of capitalism that you know is the raging engine for a lot of innovation. But that's what they have to look at at the end of the day. Um, I, I remember during the early parts of COVID, there's a lot of arguments about vaping yep. you know, in all different directions about the impact. And that was a very good hook for getting stuff into a popular press at the time because there, there, you know, there wasn't that much study. We didn't really know. Some politicians were jumping in the deep end saying, like, well, now's the time to ban it even more. You know, it's yeah, kind of yeah. everyone stuck at home. And um, you know, we saw those the cigarette sale numbers in the U S climb a lot during the pandemic, which, um, you know, for many of us would have been very concerning, but for, I, I don't know, public health, they seem to applaud this. I have no idea. Um, so I think there it's always about news hooks and, and, you know, when you have a celebrity or something who lights up a vape in public, or, you know, you've had Duncan mm -hmm. Hunter in the house or you've had, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio or something like that, he always kind of turns heads. It makes it more interesting. Uh, because unfortunately, Vaping yeah. is kind of seen as a class issue, and I'm not a Marxist. I'm not a big fan of class analysis, but it is true that it is seen as a thing that is typically blue collar, and that's why it can be regulated kind of more harshly. And I think pushing back on that on behalf of many of these people who don't have the means and, and really don't, they're not going to get too active. I remember driving through Virginia and uh, just going to the gas station, you know, and there was, I don't know which which tobacco company it was, but they had all kinds of flyers about, uh, it was probably Tobacco 21, but it's some kind of proposal. And it's like, oh, wow, that's interesting that you go to the convenience store and you kind of get this narrative. You know, we're trying to do this as much as possible, showing up at vape shops or, or trying to be at gas stations and, you know, inform people. So most people don't have that. They don't have the time. They don't have the energy. And the people at the elite media institutions don't meet these people. They don't uh, show up at their brunches and, and you know, and the rest. So I think in when trying to broach these topics with those media outlets, you kind of got to go with the economic angle. You got to make it sexy. You got to connect it to something going on. Um, I was very surprised, and I don't know, I'd like to get your reaction. Uh, whenever Juul lost its PFTA, because there's a lot of bashing on Juul, right? Not just yeah. from public health, but also from, I think, the vaping community at large. Uh, because whether it was because of, you know, sale of their shares to Altria or it was their own. Uh, it was prior to that. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, whatever their tactics or something like that. But it was very interesting to see the, the kind of defense of Juul just from like a product category perspective, not necessarily yeah. a company. But here's something that once had, you know, 70 plus percent market share, just like pff, overnight gone. And that impacted people. And what was good about Juul at the time is that it was there. It was easy. It was at the shop. People could pick it up. You get the subscription thing to your door. You know, it was, it was like an easy thing. Now that's kind of being replaced. And people are having to go to specialty vapor shops, which um, is an amazing and incredible part of the, at least the American economy and small businesses. But, you know, the fact that it does come down across these class lines I think that should leave a lot of these people scratching their heads and can be a very good argument if you are interacting with people. Because who are the people who pay the brunt of the sin taxes, as they're normally called? It's normally people of modest means. Well, I, I'm going to clear. Uh, I'm just going to let you know what I know, Mike, uh, Michael. But I think a lot of it, too, wasn't it wasn't about the kids. It wasn't about their marketing plan. They weren't part of the clique. They weren't part of the vaping group that came up. They were the Silicon Valley guys. They weren't the guys that, that you know, that diy before they they got into this they were just two guys that realized that they had a product that would that looked sexy sleek and they, they pinned it towards iphone appeal that nice sleek look black 
And I think the, the community itself didn't accept them. Prior to all their marketing, prior to all their issues that they've had, I think it wasn't even just, it wasn't even about the disposable. It wasn't the fact that it was a disposable either. It was just the fact that they weren't part of the group. They weren't part of that group that came up. They were this, these two guys from San Francisco, Silicon guys that, you know, were in it for one reason and one reason only, and that was profit. I mean, I, that's my take. I mean, and that's what it yeah, seemed like it, to me. Very, they were very quick to capitulate often. And I have to remind people a lot, you know, the reason that we don't have uh, flavored cartridges anymore is actually because of Trump. So <laughs> uh, that unfortunate fact there for a lot. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think you're, you're totally right. You know, it, when it, and they came in very naive because yep. you do not come into a highly regulated industry and just hope that, you know, you can bust it open. Yeah. And they did not put in the good efforts with um, regulators and the like. They, uh, yeah. you know, I normally I do say move fast, break things, you know, to, to quote Zuck. But um, unfortunately, in this case, you're dealing with a public health establishment that has uh, too much interest at play. Yeah, I, I, th I do I, think I don't they have would. Any yeah, okay. yeah, I don't have to any issue with any kind of harm reduction. I feel like whatever works for somebody is whatever works for somebody. I think the biggest thing that pissed me off with Juul was that they pulled their flavored cartridges before they had to. Yeah. So to me, it was like, well, then you really don't give a shit about your consumer because your consumers depend on this. And instead of defending your product, you just did what you thought the FDA was going to want you to do to look like you're on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really put the consumer ahead of your own yep. you know needs and and that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way because now you have people coming in you have mango pods you have mango you know, baby <laughs> yeah, trying to get the pod, but they, it's because they were using them and so that yeah. was almost like a slap in the face because i know that we we won't do that to our to our customers we're going to fight as long yeah. as we have to and as hard as we have to to make sure that customers get what they need and what they need is flavors flavors do, do you think though as far as your as the company do you think if they would have approached the industry prior to coming out with their product and 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 became part of the group they would have been liked a little bit more i mean did the paul you know did their flavors were it wasn't even manufactured here in the united states correct yeah for the most part they were look You've also got to give it to them because they actually came originally from the PAX group, okay? It was two two of the guys from the PAX group that then broke away into Juul. Their, their two biggest mistakes were, yes, they were very naive when it came to advertising. That's for a start. Yeah. Second, second thing, once the press got a hold of it and there was posters put up in every school around the country... Yeah. That, that, that just turned them into a juggernaut very, very quickly. And that's when they started grabbing market share at such a rapid rate. They didn't know what the hell they were doing at that stage. No. Right? They were too busy counting their money. Well, that money was rolling. I, 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 okay. But then they, <laughs> then they made the third mistake of getting in bed with BT, yeah. with yeah. Big Tobacco. Right? Yeah. So you've got a set of mistakes along the way. You're right, Ali, that removing removing the pods, okay, was, I think it was way, way, way too soon. And it actually hurt their going forward PMTA process because, A, there was, from memory, there was, I think, 23 registered flavors once upon a time. And then they broke it back down to 15. And then it was down to eight from memory. And then mango got taken off. And mango. Like, Shut, knock it off with this mango business. <laughs> right? I, I, I'll mango. I, I will create you the <laughs> best right. mango you have ever had. Not a problem. Uh, that's uh, easy. Mucho. Right? Mucho gracias. That, that's it's easy. only going to cost you $800 to ship it to me. <laughs> oh, no, we, we, we know someone. Don't worry about that. I always know. Right? I always know. I, always I got no, a guy. We, we, got we know someone. It, no, it's all good. But they they made three very big mistakes. Yeah. Okay. If they'd approached and actually helped people, I, I think that if they'd reached out to some of the bigger manufacturers at that point in time when they first got into the market 
and they offered to co-pack for them or because at one stage there, yeah, there was the knockoff pods that actually fit into a dual device. Yeah. yeah. And then dual version two stopped that, all right? And then I've seen others because I hang around in a lot of different forums and I attend a lot of international type meetings. And these guys were on the right pathway. But if they got in bed, and I, and I mean this, with some of the bigger liquid manufacturers back then and said, look, here's the device. We've done all the heavy lifting on the device. Would you like to, A, use our device, but you seem to have a very nice liquid line. Yeah. How about how about we go down this pathway? Yeah. Trust they wanted me, the whole then, thing. They wanted the whole thing. Right. And, and that's where they got greedy. And that's why I'm saying if they'd taken these steps when they first got into the game, trust me, they'd be around now and there'd be a massive war chest because of all the other liquid manufacturers that were involved with them. Yeah. That would fuck shit up at the FDA. Yeah. I always thought they were going to go the route of the Apple store. I always thought that they were going to open no, no, the, ju no, the Jewel no, store in no, the mall. No, where you no, no. PMI did that with the ICOS system. Yeah, and I, I've got photos of, of the icon. Yeah, but they weren't stores. jewel. If if they would have went that route in the beginning, yeah. when they started taking up all the shares, if they would have went a jewel store where you couldn't get it anywhere else but their stores, I think things would have been a little bit different as well. Okay, but there was also graphic images that I saw a couple. Oh of well, years yeah, their ago advertising of... was horrible. No, just... no, no, no. There I mean, was graphic that images. Put it next of to like a... a Corona ad, and it looks pretty similar to yeah, me. I mean, <laughs> there was a... All you needed was Snoop Dogg and, and whatever, and he would have had it. There was a there was a a project that was going ahead at one stage, and they had an iCost store and a Jewel store next door to each other, so you could choose either a liquid variant or you could go to the heat yeah. not burn. Right, I, I remember seeing the artwork of that and their concept. They did do a couple of dual concept stores. I think one was in Atlanta from memory, and then there was another one, but I don't know what happened to them. But they did make a lot of mistakes when they yeah. first got into the industry. Okay. They stepped on a lot of toes, right? Um, I know that their devices... Well, the devices themselves are manufactured in China because yeah. there's no way in the world. All I know but is the, it was a tank. That device was a tank. You could do anything to it. It would continue to work. Wash it. Throw it off the back of a uh, truck. You do whatever <laughs> the hell you wanted to do that thing. It would work. Well, <laughs> it, it was well, the iPhone of vaping. <laughs> well, that and that was the other thing that got China pissed off yeah. because you couldn't break the thing. So people weren't coming back and buying Right, the new whiz bang hoo ha every every couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's the other thing that got a lot of people's noses out of joint. But they were losing them though, Paul. That was that video. Where's my jewel, man? Where's my jewel? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Well, plus, again. Was, they had those compatible THC knockoff pods that were that Correct. you could use with the jewel too. Yeah, yeah, that was early. Someone even right there probably happened with mm -hmm. some of these counterfeit pods. I'll tell you that I I might have gotten a few of these at some point. Um, yeah. Can't confirm nor deny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know though about reaching out to the vapor I industry or world. Line. Oh, line line there, uh, <laughs> because you know who is the vapor industry? Because I think I think that's a good argument for you know if they had open sourced their Thank kind you. of process, yeah. right? Yeah. If they had brought Thank them you. in, yeah, exactly. I think that that, that, that is a, that is a, a very good argument, and it means that you raise the amount of stakeholders. Um, when yeah. it comes to the store, they would just not have reached the scale that they got to. And it would have been like a very niche product and probably been a lot more expensive. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that that is a good tale. I mean, we'll, hopefully someone will put together a good book about this. Um, I don't know if you've read, by the way, book recommendations. Um, if you've had Jacob Greer on, uh, Creative yeah, Destruction of the yeah. That's a great, great book. book though. Yep. Great book. Uh, very sharp dude. He he kind of underscores why we have these problems today, and it goes back to you know 2009 and FDA tobacco stuff. But you know to to see the evolution of this, you know, there's just there are always going to be a subset of a population that you know likes to use different substances, and it's just how we deal with that through the the health lens, through the lifestyle freedom lens, through you know, education and children lens. 
you know, risky teens will do what risky teens do. Yep. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Jewel did make a lot of mistakes and it was unfortunate. (laughs) They, I could see a future would be very different. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, the open sourcing of, of, uh, you know, different pods or flavors, I think that would have been alternative future. Eh? Yeah. A hundred percent because we even, there was a few liquid manufacturers around the world and on one of them, I actually reached out and I said, I, are, are you willing to do a co-packing situation for the U S market? And I said, Oh no, not really. I said, well, there you go. Stick it in your ass then. We we asked. Why, why does he got to stick it in his ass? Why? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> it's just a, it's terminology from Aussie. Aussie. I man. know what but, it is. I know. And is. and I know a couple of people in the UK as well that reached out to them asking whether or not they could co-pack, you know, for that marketplace because they want a specific flavors for that region, and they wouldn't be willing to do it. They just said, "Oh no, you can have these, this, 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 and this." Yeah. Shit, they, I, they, now that I think about it, that would have been awesome. I mean, just well, to be able to get whatever flavor you want it from. Hello, hello, yes. Yeah, that would have been pretty awesome. It would have, they would have been unstoppable. They would have told you took 78% of the market. Shit, they would have owned 95% of the market. I mean, there'd be probably like, you could probably count out half of these small device companies in China. Goodbye. Well, yes and no, because you would have had or the generation, the first generation jewel, then 2.0, by now we would have probably been up to like the fifth or sixth variant of it. Yeah. No, you wouldn't see that, any, that was the difference. You wouldn't see any of these uh, 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 tanks that are designed for a mouth to lung. It, it, you oh, wouldn't need them. Yes, you would. Sorry. Well, but. for the, for the, you know, the it would still be, Stovesto, whatever you call it, I got yeah. it. So you'd still well, have those. You still have the Greeks and the Italians still coming up with shit that would be overpriced and out of a majority of the vapors market. So <laughs> <laughs> the technologies, the the technology is always going to grow, and we're seeing now very smart devices coming out. They're very small. They're compatible across numerous platforms, and I take my hat off to these guys that are manufacturing a tank system where they've got a different base where you can use five or six different coils in it or five or six different manufacturers of coils. Yeah. That's smart, right? <clears throat> I I like that we are still moving ahead, but we are hitting roadblocks. Everywhere we're hitting roadblocks. The technology is getting better. Chip technology is... is cutting edge now with some of the stuff that's out there yeah all right that's the best part about it but you've got you've got your old faithfuls like your old dna 60s that still chug along mine still Um, works yeah and you're never going to kill the silly thing right you have to be (laughs) stupid to kill it but these are these are some of the things that need to be done jewel had the opportunity to be a world leader and a game changer for the whole industry, but they fucked it all up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Simple. That's why they needed to get some bait people in there before they started going crazy. That's what they should have done. Too late. Oh. Yeah. Too, it's too late That's for too that. Late. It's too late. They should have just st- stood behind the harm reduction, you know, factor of it and not been so quick to to bow down to what the FDA was doing and and they had the money where they could have done some campaigning that they had yeah, the money exactly. for good lawyers, lawyers that yeah. should have told them, don't they do just this. Kind of bowed don't. Down and said, oh, we'll get approved if we just do everything. And then they didn't get approved anyway. They didn't. There you go. But that could all be a ploy. Yeah. All of a sudden, Mango is back. Oh. Yeah, but those, hopes, those hopes died in a North Carolina courtroom. So, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Mango's back, baby. I can see the commercial <laughs> now. That's how it would start. Jewel, Mango is back. <laughs> they better have an 80 year old woman on there vaping it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we I've talked about this on the show many times is, you know, how I got started with Blue. And it was because my mom saw 
the product on the Phil Donahue show and how he praised this product and how amazing it was and how it's helping everybody. And, and I get this phone call. I saw this thing on, on the Phil Donahue show. It's called blue. Well, she didn't say it right. Cause her Italian accent, it was all thrown off, but it was, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this out. And that's how I got started. And here was a product that it was everywhere. Everybody was saying great, great things about it. This is amazing. Finally, something that can mimic the smokers, you know, routine and it's going to help them quit smoking. And, and, and we went from that to, to where we're at today, where it's just like, it's the devil, it's the devil, you know? And it's yeah. just amazing to me, you know, yes, it, it, it was probably back then, sure, probably a hundred thousand sales and sales probably wasn't a huge thing. It probably wasn't even a million dollar product yet. But eventually, as the as the industry grew, and I do think you know the wild wild west of e liquid manufacturers. Now I shouldn't say manufacturers. Let's just say e liquid people, DIY people, selling it on Facebook, selling it on Instagram, selling it. On, it was everywhere. I mean, if you, if you were a vapor and you couldn't get your hands on e liquid eight years ago you were doing something wrong because it was literally everywhere. It was everywhere. And, you know, we did clean that up for a while there. We've got a lot of, a lot of people started realizing, I don't, I hate using the word, but a lot of people realized they didn't want bathtub juice anymore. You know, it was just right. like, I want a little bit of a better product. I want something that's coming from a lab, coming from a manufacturer that has some sort of regulations but it yeah, seems we're not like anti-regulation. That's a big yeah. misconception. We're, we want regulations. We just want them to be fair. Like fair. if the FDA would just say, this is exactly what we want you to do. This is how we want your products to look. This is what you're not allowed to do. We would go, okay. And we would yeah. do it. That's, yeah. the whole, that's the whole thing. We just, there is no pathway that, that ends in success for, for small yeah. vapor not businesses. Fair. And I mean, I just got, I, I filed synthetic PMTA for my company. I just got my acceptance letter last week. Yeah. And I'm like, Yay! I get to be happy for a month until they send me something. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We're gonna the the flight the the field goal moved over to the right by five yards, and you guys just missed the you know no right. no right. no. I, I mean, I, it's funny you bring that up because that's the you know that was the thing everyone always talked about in the beginning. It's just like here's a company they just don't they just want to do what they want to do. They don't want to be regulated. No, we do want to be regulated. I want a product that I can trust that I'm putting in my body, just like yeah. a majority of any other baby that are out there. They want a product that they feel safe at buying. That's why people stop buying e-liquid off of some Facebook group page. You know, it was just, they were done. They were done. They, they, the, the products got better. They got safer and people went that route, you know? So I, it, it just blows me away that we've gone from the blues where everybody was just, this was the greatest thing ever made this finally, finally have something that works, you know? Cause if you think about it, what did we have prior to that? gums, patches, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, hypnosis. Uh, and these things weren't working. They weren't working for people. Oh, I forgot the cold, great, cold uh, turkey. <laughs> there's a great vice documentary about this prison or this warden came up with these like flexible e-cigs, right? Yeah. So you couldn't see anybody. But yeah. like, this is like, <laughs> it's actually like it worked a lot for these guys and they're all like pumped up. They need a cig at some point. And, you know, he was able to create this product and create into, you know, a business in a yeah. way. Yeah, you know, using using prisoners is not always you know my my go to, but at least a little bit. <laughs> they're, they're, the prisoners are. Hold on, let me find it. Prisoners are lab rats. <laughs> well, yeah, that that as well. But you only you only have to look at the last three years in liquid manufacturing and and the technology behind it. Even the flavor manufacturers, they've had to jump through hoops now and change everything. Like yeah. we. have We've been hit with Logics. now. Now, now Australia is looking at if you're bringing in a, a concentrate. Now they want all the cast numbers submitted to the regulatory authority. And I thought, hang on a second, this is getting a little bit out of control now. That you now have to each individual concentrate. Some of them have got up to twelve cast numbers, fifteen cast numbers in them. This is, and I've got hundreds of concentrates in this cupboard. I'd be yeah. in all kind. Of, I'd be on the computer for a month, yeah. just inputting cast numbers. Well, that's their way another. of getting rid of the, of the same situation here. That's their way of getting rid of the small guy and just getting rid of them. And 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 because who's going to afford to do that? Who's going to be able well, to? Well, 
I mean, okay. we, look what they had to do here. I mean, how many companies lopped together just to get these PMTAs done? They knew they couldn't do it themselves. They had the a they had lot, the, but the but also the concentrate manufacturers a few years ago weren't willing to hand over COAs on a lot of the products yeah. that are, that they were putting out. Yeah, you had to you had to sign NDAs just to get a data set. Um, okay, that's fine. But this war is happening. The FDA is asking for all of this data. Why didn't they just open the doors and say, look, here is what you need. Yeah. You don't have to sign an NDA. Here is the data. You're a customer of ours for how many years? No, we don't want to see you fall over. We don't want to see you fail these testing procedures and protocols. That should have just happened automatically. Well, doesn't the FDA already have those numbers from the companies? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, they had to apply to get that concentrated on the market, so they should have those fucking numbers already. Thank you. Yeah, and this is stupid. this has been my argument Caffeine in the background. In. <laughs> this has been my argument now in the background, and you'll see me sometimes on Twitter. I'll ask the question about it. But hang on a second. You've got this data set. Oh, what you can't find it? Yeah. Well, have a look on the have a look on another hard drive. It has to be there, and you can't rock cross correlate between what you have on file and what well don't they around? throw in the fact that now it is is it's being mixed with another product so it should have some sort of different yeah see i yeah that's that's it, the fda is not stupid people want to say they're stupid they're not stupid they have just well, as good lawyers they have just as good lawyers when we had to register that, everything and put everything that was in our liquids from, yeah. from when they made this a rule, they know everything that's in our liquid. Yeah, they know exactly. Yeah, what's, they but, know how it works. They know everything. Yeah. And yep. then, and then I've been trying to simplify the process by using one manufacturer, putting all the different flavors together, sending that back. That final recipe has its own COA. Yeah. It's a single concentrate. It's not twenty different concentrates to make a liquid anymore. It's one. One, yeah. Well, they're even getting uh, that'd smart be a now. lot easier. That'd be yeah. a lot easier to do the paperwork on one, yeah, and not twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they're even smart enough now to realize that if if flavors are gone, they're gonna they're gonna ban concentrate. So now you can you, There's already regulations oh. being made to to ban you from buying a concentrated shot so you won't like i was talking about remember a couple of weeks ago on this show it's like well if you're going to take tobacco what's going to stop me from selling shots at a, at a vape shop and they figured that one out so that well they're, they're well, it's all they're, intended intended you intended. yeah well i'm gonna make a cake out of it a mango cake i want a mango mm -hmm. cake <laughs> I, know, I, know, uh, yeah, I yeah. believe in the uh, disruptive process yeah. of entrepreneurs, and I think there'll yeah. be another way. You know, yeah. if, if you well, go to D.C., cannabis is technically legal. Uh, yeah. There's no stores yet. But if you buy this T-shirt, yeah. you know, you can get all kinds of stuff. You know? so <laughs> I think sure it's $80. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's some high-end cotton right there. Does it say uh, yeah. Supreme on it somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I said, uh, yeah, I didn't say Supreme. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be very, very interesting because if they go down the pathway, and I've said this before, the, the flavoring industry, we're only, you know, a little tiny market of what they do with the rest of the flavorings, okay? We're about 3 to 5% of the whole flavoring industry. Yeah. But when you put that together all over the world, right, you, you have – quite a big group of people you've got to be smarter now in how you're putting together these products yeah um i'm not afraid of regulation i'm not having and i'm not afraid of having any of my liquids tested because i'm working with flavors that are already being tested we know the outcome that's why i say combine them all get into bed with a big flavor house and say look we need this process done yeah. this is the only way to do it all right it's the only way to do it now. Well, and they, they know their numbers, right, Paul? I mean, they, 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 the big flavor houses, they know what their mm. percentage of their sales are towards vaping. And, and worldwide, that's got to be a large number. I mean, if there's supposedly 15 million vapors in the United States alone, I mean, give me a break. I mean, that's still big dollars to any flavor house to lose. They don't want to lose that money. It's not that. A lot of the, 
we spoke about it last week. And it also comes down to whether or not these flavor houses are willing to put out a product that, like, who the hell's putting that up there? <laughs> I know, I know, I know who that is. Uh, it's I Amber. Bet, uh, Amber Cooper. Yeah, yeah, I bet I was about to say it. It'd have to be someone like that. But the Great the other list. thing, yeah the the other thing is that manufacturers of flavors in the United States need to need to really just say, look, don't drop the ball and just say, look, all we're going to create now is TPD compliant flavors. They can be used anywhere in the world. Yeah. Game over. Game over. Just remove everything. You've got no problems then in the United States with like diacetyl, acetaldehyde, whatever else you like, sinaldehyde, whatever other concentrate or, or component you want removed and just be done with it. <laughs> We're all street smart. <laughs> well, all the like component parts, right? You just you buy your your base or whatever, and then you just kind of mix this in at the end. I think that, that's totally right. Uh, I do have to go in a bit, but can I play a clip? Can yeah, I play an audio? Yeah, clip? Is that yeah cool? sure, yeah. go for it. All right, Make sure so you I want to bring the audio up. part of it where it says, "I don't know." Yeah, yeah, it's just the audio yeah. stories. Uh, so this is a clip from then candidate Joe Biden on vaping specifically. And um, I've, I've got these, but I, I thought it was interesting because we're bringing up, you know, sort of small business angles, science, the groups. So I want to play this clip. This is him talking. Um, I don't think he would remember where, uh, no. but <laughs> or something like this. So let's, let's have some fun. The answer is I have not met with any of the particular individual small business people selling the vaping equipment and the kinds of material that you can in include and in, uh, in, in, in put in the pipe. But I tell you what, one of the things that, you know, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. we got to let them know who we are. At least I don't know who I am. And I choose science over fiction. And so if the science is demonstrating it's doing great damage, then I don't care what it does to a small business person who's selling this stuff. If it is damaging lungs, if it's causing the kind of damage that is said and that study's not been fully done yet, if it turns out that it is, then I would eliminate it. I would make it, I, I would go after it in a hard way. I would make it broader, not just where he is. Mm. Mm. In the pipe, Get whatever you put in the pipe. <laughs> yeah. Really scientific. <laughs> what kind of pipe, Tara Biden? <laughs> and Bernie, hang on. Is the worst. Actually, if we remember that, uh, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we won't go there with him. <laughs> and and the other one was Cuomo when he said, "So what?" So All he was saying was, "So, yeah, so what? what?" So what? Th that's the thing too, because we we talk. I'm you know joking that the FDA is not stupid and blah blah blah. But I think the higher up you go, the less knowledge you have about this industry, or it could just be I don't give a shit attitude and i'm talking senators and congressmen and and you know who, whoever you know biden or whoever the vice president or even some of those cabinet people that are that that help biden in some way understand what things are going i don't think they even understand and and, and it, it, to me it comes down to like dude, why are we wasting our time with this we you know and i get it don't get me wrong we have a war going on we're, we're dealing with in the economy we're dealing with oil we're dealing with vaping is pretty far down the, the list of things and i can understand why they 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 have that idea of like oh just like he said a pipe he has no fucking idea he's probably never even seen one you know what it is his daughter uses one she was uh, yes. there was a picture of her using a jewel the day before yeah. <laughs> well, she's not telling dad that she's not telling dad, oh dad i got a jewel and you know this is really help see that's what we need and that's the problem i we we are facing because we're back into the closet we're back to like my ex-wife she smoked for 20 years no one in my family other than me knew my ex-wife smoked that whole fucking time no one because she was so good at it and that's where we're at now it's just that we're at a point where it's like we're going to do it in their cars. We're going to make sure nobody sees us doing it. Uh, you know, we're going to you know, go to the bathroom, take a quick hit of our little pod device or whatever. And they're not sharing any longer. They're not letting people know that this has helped them, you know, and it's sad because we used to have all these great stories, you know, and, but like I said, a couple of weeks ago, I think what happened here in California has helped vaping in a way, because now I'm having people come up to me 
and asking me, what is the deal with this vaping? Why is, why is, why is our government spending so much of their time on this? Why is this even being voted on? And, and, and that's great. That, like I said, there's bad news is always good news. So to me, you know, here in California, I think it's really opened a lot of people's eyes to like, why are they so focused on this? You know, and I'm having complete strangers coming up to me now. Not like before, before I just get a look like, what the fuck is he doing? Now they're walking up. No, it's one of the most disruptive technologies of the 20th century. It is. (laughs) And, And it's changed people worldwide. Okay. And every, there's groups all over the world talking about it. There's problems in each parts of the world and why they're trying to stop it. Yeah. Every, everyone thinks that big tobacco is still the problem here. They're not. They're changing their ways. They're moving into hybrid technologies. Simple as that, right? You're never going to get them out of the game. The, like the tobacco companies now are growing cannabis for fuck's sake. They're into wine making. They're into beer manufacturing. <laughs> they're everywhere. No, no, yeah. no. That's they're diversifying yeah, into yeah. these different markets because they've seen us come along and go, "Well, they're fucking shit up for us." So either we get on the bandwagon, yeah. and we start we start redeveloping our product and our strategy. Otherwise, we're going to go down the gurgler. We're here to make money for our shareholders. Yeah. As simple as that. Yeah. Right. And that's that's where it's all changing. But the pharmaceutical industry has a lot more to answer to because, A, they've lost a customer. We get healthy again. We don't need their pills, sprays, suppositories, whatever. We don't need any of that anymore. This is the problem, and this is one of the biggest cruxes that no one's willing to talk about openly the pharmaceutical industry is trillion dollar in, instead of billion dollar, like trillions of dollars in, in pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Well, we've, we've become, I like to, I make this analogy, but like vapors with stats and statistics, we've become the, uh, the, uh, the uh, alien conspiracy people that are on the Netflix and history channel. We've been, you've seen those guys that come on. We've become those people. That's what I, I, I almost feel like I'm like talking about aliens when I'm talking about vape. Cause I'm just getting like, Oh, that, that, that that's crazy. That can't be good for you. Uh, you're putting that in your lungs. Well, here, here's the statistics. Here's the stats, you know, and it's almost like I'm selling them a fucking UFO. You know, it, that's how I feel now. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's no Bigfoot I, videos. It's, you know, <laughs> like either that. Bigfoot too, man. <laughs> it's like, well, that's what, that's the next thing. We're going to see a picture of Bigfoot sitting in the woods, hitting a jewel, hitting a fucking jewel, <laughs> sitting on a tree stump, right? Just hitting a jewel. <laughs> hey, big, it's, if it's good enough for Bigfoot, it's good enough for me, you know? I, <laughs> That, it, that's what it seems like it's it's gotten to the point it's like we're we're these we're these crazy people but you know and then when i throw out the big one i, I tell them okay you know you you don't want to listen to anything i say that's fine i said mm. go on the internet and search for anyone that has gotten sick from vaping from vaping e-liquid go find me one article that shows me that someone has gotten cancer or has ruined their lungs or has ED, or has any of the things that you have thrown out in the last 10 years, hair loss, I don't care, uh, nosebleeds, go find me just one article that says that someone has gotten sick or has died from vaping, and then we'll talk. And then they just shut up and they walk away because they know there's nothing out there. Where's all the deaths? 10 years, 12 years, what are we in? 15, let's be honest, what, maybe 15 years into this product? Paul, yeah. yeah, someone should have died by now. Yeah, right, hundred <laughs> percent. Hang on. Hey, tell that guy, tell your bookie to come back later. <laughs> <laughs> He's betting on horses. Paul's always betting on horses. But yeah, I, I mean that's that's my bottom line because I get frustrated. We all get frustrated. We get to the point where no matter what you say, they're not going to listen. I just tell them, go find me one article. Find me one, and that's not a volley, because if you're going to throw that yeah. volley crap in my face, or we've got a lot to talk. I'll send you well, a bunch of Charles, links. Charles Gardner, he's got that uh, that thing running with the cash offer. I think it's up to $7,000 now for one proven death from e-liquid. Yeah. Nobody's taking him up on that pot. Like, yeah. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, hey, we got about 10 minutes. You, you want to plug something? Why? <laughs> what am I plugging? Uh, let's see here. No, no. Just, uh, I got your thing. Yeah. yeah every, let me let me let this get this out there. Hey, everybody, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you can find all the links uh, in the header of this video. You can find it. Uh, Wise uh, YouTube. <laughs> Not YouTube. Do you have a YouTube? You don't have a YouTube thing. Do you have a YouTube thing? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm on the YouTube right now. I'm, I'm you're in you're tubing it. You're tubing it right now. No, but you'll find his Twitter account, uh, his website uh, for Consumer Choice Radio is on there in the header. Uh, the website is also on there. Uh, is that that? Where does that take you again? I'm sorry, I forgot. That's my site. Uh, but ConsumerChoiceCenter.org is sort yeah. of our our professional yeah. work. That's my own site. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's kind of strange. I've had to archive all of my articles going back many years because yeah. uh, media outlets tend to change <laughs> yeah. or they yeah. get you know deleted. But uh, radio show goes out once a week. It's available as a podcast uh, as well, so you guys can subscribe to that in your uh, podcast stores. Uh, we broadcast in North Carolina and Toronto and a couple other radio stations as well. So uh, one hour long, small segments, good interviews. We put the YouTube videos up to. Uh, so just trying to talk about smart policy, consumer choice. Uh, yeah. We've had some very good vape heroes on, uh, some good people who actually can bring some good perspective and actually are heavy hitters. And at the same time can uh, talk about the news of the day, things that impact stuff. So check yeah, that out. And you're not, you just don't focus on vaping on your, on your channel there or your, your radio. That's I it. don't No, We don't. Um, it's not a sole focus, but right. you know, I, I it's a good 30% uh, just because it is such a huge issue. And, um, you know, whenever there's these uh, flavor bans at the state level, you know, we're very active in uh, trying to provide testimony and facts and get meetings in and try to provide a different perspective. So it'll depend, you know, if, yeah. if prohibitionism fever kicks in again next year, then uh, it'll probably jump up again. But yeah, I uh, hate one big hate, fact. You know, I hate Paul. He's wearing fucking shorts. I had to put jeans on. Him. <laughs> so even in California, I had to put jeans. I still have my flip flops on, but I had to put jeans on a sweatshirt. Uh, real quick, before we got about eight minutes, uh, I, I wanted you to give some inspiration to the blogger, the blogger that is writing for vaping. Uh, we have one up there to the right, but a little <laughs> bit of inspiration in for, you know, just. And give them some something to. It gives me a lot of inspiration. <laughs> no, I, you don't need it, but I'm t I'm talking about the the new the, the person that wants to get into blogging and wants to uh, write about vaping, how to go about it, and 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 stuff like that. Well, uh, I think citing facts is important. Good personal stories and testimonies impact way more, and we just don't have enough of that. And I think a lot of people, you know, the vast majority of vapors. You know, they're not doing live programs. You know, they're not in the chat. They're at home. They have didn't, didn't think about it. They take a hit of their vape and they're not involved in the broader thing. You know, there's it, it's this 80-20 rule, right? So I think telling your personal story and getting it out there is probably the most important thing because that is that is not mediated through the normal lobbying health industry narrative. It's from an individual person. It's an individual story. And people can recognize themselves in that. Uh, that's why I, I love reading Allison's writing and, and helping uh, push that as much as possible because it's a big personal story. And she's able to mix it with facts and spicy, peppery language, <laughs> but provide yeah. that perspective that, that makes it very personal. So if you want to do that, and you know, social media is great. Twitter is great for that. Uh, sometimes the algos are not your friends and will cut you down and, and uh, put down you know, how many people see it. But putting together a website, um, submitting a letter to the editor is really easy. Actually, there's just uh, you just do 100, 200 words. If there's some vape thing that's happening in your community, just writing a letter to the editor, it'll get printed in the paper, it'll get syndicated online. Um, policymakers read that stuff. They read local papers because they want to see how they're mentioned. They want to see, hey, what, what's the press favorables today? So if you're able to get published in any way in your community, whether it be a local blog, whether it be a newspaper, you know, have at it, do it, tell your story, focus on you, the individual, how it's helped. And I think that'll go a long way. We don't always have to be, you know, uber complex and try to go to NYT all the time. Um, I call it now, it's not the mainstream media, it's the downstream media. <laughs> because what's happening today is online. Online yep. is becoming, you know, our main focus. So you guys have at it. Uh, we're going to keep on chugging along. There's plenty of stuff to work on, but yeah. hey, I, I think the, 
the science is not only in our favor, but the innovation and, and the yeah. winds of change. Yeah. I miss seeing my dad sitting there folding that paper, being angry, slamming it down on the coffee table, <laughs> yelling about some senator, yelling about some fucking mayor. I miss this. So you can't do that with a tablet. You can't slam your tablet on the fucking <laughs> table. You can you take that paper and you roll it. You'd hit us with it too sometimes. <laughs> that, paper, that paper had many uses. <laughs> I miss the paper days and being a paper boy. Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. It was great having you. We'd love to have you come back on anytime you want to come back on. You have a, you have a great radio voice. You know what you're doing. We love it. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so yeah, much. and we're we're going to work on doing some more um, nationwide studies. And again, um, Brian Marlowe and the the crew in in Australia have been doing a great job uh, elevating these issues in a lot of different countries. But for the states, what we're doing is also a lot of graphics to where we look at flavor bans. We look at, you know, what's happening in uh, different laws. <laughs> Any, no worries. Uh, anything <laughs> that we can do, put together in terms of graphics, getting it out there on social media. I mean, getting out to the, I hate this term, but to the normies so yeah. they, they can see this and they get alternative programming, as it were. Uh, we'll be doing that and putting that out as much as possible. So we do have resources over there, consumerchoicecenter.org. Uh, YouTube channel, we got plenty, plenty of vaping vids and all kinds of, fun stuff. Um, I've got articles on Bloomberg going back to 2017, talking about what he's doing, not just with vaping, but also sugar, big, you know, yeah. big gulp, this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> big soda. Uh, he's got big sugar, big sugar, big <laughs> sugar. <laughs> he's got his toes dipped in everything. He's got his toes mm -hmm. dipped in everything. Absolutely. I, and yeah. I, I didn't bring up, you know, obviously climate change is big on people's minds, but, well, um, you know, a lot of this that is very related in terms of um, bans, restrictions, and reducing your personal freedom. So we have yeah. to push back against that yeah. wherever possible. There's, there's no ozone. There's no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck space. Fuck space. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm 54. How much more time do I have left anyway? <laughs> Screw that ozone. Be careful now. I know which people to piss off. Them and the flat earthers. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh. I remember someone doing a show a few years back. They Someone made a joke about the flat earth. Next minute, there was 200 of them in the chat hey, room. I did, <laughs> my, my, I did my, on my other show, my Friday Night BS show, we did a, a whole episode on flat earthers. And boy, did I get some email. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> I got some good email. Oh, well, it, well, it's it's funny because half the time now, does Australia really exist? Uh, yeah, last <laughs> time I looked, <laughs> that's always a good one. You know, we it's might not, not be, really there. We we might not be on everyone's postcard, but yeah, we're there. It's we're, there. You know, an island at the other at the ass end of the world. It's yeah. all good. Don't worry yeah. about it. I like the new one. We still have a few minutes, but I like the new one uh, that someone posted a few days ago. I don't know if it's an older one, but it's uh, it shows uh, uh, Japan attacking Honolulu, and it shows them mm -hmm. that it, it, they went if they if they went this way, and it's across the kind you know across. We would have seen them, right? They, they, there's no way they went around the globe to come into <laughs> Honolulu. No, they would. <laughs> <laughs> they, they went through a worm tunnel and just ended up on you know that's it <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, actually guys. actually bruni that that could actually be quite i a don't want to make anybody angry in the chat though i believe in i believe whatever you want to believe that's that's my philosophy i believe whatever well they want to study on vaping in space now all right bruni We'll yeah that's, the that's, the one that, that's that's what elon one should do i think elon well, then, should can, do it can brad pitt blow smoke rings yeah. You, know, you, know, you know Elon, by the way. You know he he uh, was a producer on Thank You for Smoking. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So him and David Sachs, who are David Sachs, is uh, one of the PayPal mafia. So he's now yeah. essentially the advisor to Elon. So they both teamed up, Peter Thiel as well, and they put up the money for the Thank You for Smoking movie. Oh, wow! I did that's I did not know that. Not yeah, well, that's why we need a we need a good vape movie, Elon. Elon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can team up with uh, the Amazon guy, which is named Bezo. They both fly to them. <laughs> They're both going out of space. So let them both do throw some vaping videos up there. Have some guy bring the dude that does all the tricks. 
take them up to space and let them blow O-rings and tunnels and all that other stuff up there in space. I don't know. Hand it to a few monkeys. I don't know. Do something. <laughs> Have some fun with it, Bezo. And, and I don't know. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. We're at a point where it's it's so hard. Whatever we say is just basically we're talking alien nonsense. All right, guys. Thank you again. Uh, why you. for joining us? <laughs> I'll get your name right next time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Allison. Uh, we'll see everybody uh, next Wednesday. Uh, I don't think we have a guest next Wednesday. I don't, I'm not sure. We'll have to look into it. Uh, but we'll see everybody next Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, again, thank you. And uh, that's it. We're out of here. I never have a good end outro, so that's all I say. Bye. <laughs> Bye.